super smart slots. Uh, I hope you guys are well and I hope um, you are staying healthy and I hope you guys know how much I miss you. I really wish that we were together. Uh, but right now, this is how we're going to do school. It's going to be a funny time. We're going to learn a ton, I'm sure. Um, it's going to be great because we can do hard things and we're super flexible and creative. And we're problem solvers. So and we're one just... day you need to be a young boss. Why can't we Sometimes we're going to have guest appearances by four-year-olds. Um, so it's going to be probably hilarious. It's, um, I'm going to do my best to be my best teacher. And you are going to do your best to be your best self. Um, and we're just going to proceed as planned. We're going to get into... Um, you want to see? You can see, Georgie. Uh, we're going to get into lesson... Um, I forget which lesson. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to continue working on scaling factors. You know the funny things that can happen when we ooh, have scaling factors. Here's my little dinosaurs. Did you guys speedy have? cheetah. And the speedy cheetah. Uh, yeah, so you guys are probably going to get to know these guys quite well. <laughs> don't, don't scare them. Um, and we're just going to proceed as, as we typically would. We're just going to continue. I can fly that Five, five, six. Oh. And then one, two, three, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, when four, five, six, and eleven, twelve, 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 two little boys home with me. Uh, they are asleep and now we're going to get into lesson 23. Here is our learning target and this just looks, I mean some things are going to look very similar, some things are going to look different. Uh, so for this little video portion I'm just asking that you just kind of watch what's going on and think about what's going on and then after I do a few problems I am going to release you to do some independent work. Uh, so here in lesson 23, uh, this is our first uh, e-school or e-learning lesson. I'm kind of excited. Uh, we are going to compare the size of the product to the size of the factors. Think about scaling factors. Think about, um, I know it seems kind of like a long time ago, but think about what we were talking about before Pi Day. Um, oops, that's not the one I wanted. Um, Last Thursday, we were talking about scaling factors. Do you remember when I drew that perfect um, drawing of the Eiffel Tower? It looked exactly like the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, that day. So we're just kind of, we're just continuing that work today. So I want uh, us to all look at this problem here. So we're multiplying two meters by various, we're gonna, going to be calling these um, bubbled fractions, scaling factors. Think about our conversation um, about Shark Tank and how usually businesses want to scale. They want to make their, their earnings larger. But sometimes, I don't know, well, I don't think this would ever happen in business, but sometimes, um, well, let's think about what's going on right now. A lot of businesses are losing money because we're multiplying by um, scaling factors that are smaller than one. If a, if a business is making tons of money, that means the company is growing. They would be multiplying by something larger than one. 
But right now, what's going on in business is that the scaling factors are being essentially multiplied by something smaller than one business. Business is not looking so hot right now, but we will get through it. Um, so we're just going to be checking out these scaling factors and what happens when we multiply two meters each time by a different scaling factor. So I want you to notice first this 97 over 100. This is a scaling factor that's less than one whole. Um, it's three one hundredths less than one whole. Um, so let's look at, let's go ahead and multiply this through and we're going to think um, with our final product, we're going to think about how our final product is different from our original two meters. Um, so let's go ahead and just multiply through. So we're looking at two meters times 97 hundredths. So that's two times 97 on the top. And then that's going to be over 100. Um, we're just going to do 97 times 2 quickly over here. 2 times 4, thank you, Gabriel, is... No, no, 2 times 7 is 14, thank you. 2 times 9, thank you, Zoe, is 18, plus 1 is 19. So what we're looking at is 194 hundredths. And... I want to think about going ahead and simplifying this. And 194 hundredths is going to be 1 and 94 hundredths. Um, I'm just going to put that in a blue box for now. And we're going to um, we're going to compare that to 2 meters in a second. Let's do the rest of this work. So in B, we're multiplying 2 meters times 100 one hundredths. So that looks like on the top row, 2 times 101 over 100. When we multiply, we'll do uh, 2 times 101 right here very quickly. Thank you, Ivy. It's 2 and 0. Thank you, Logan. And thank you, Jaden, too. So what we're looking at here, my friends, is 202 one hundredths. And then when we simplify that, we're going to be looking at two and two, two with two hundredths left over. Okay, I'm going to put that in a blue box. And then finally, let's go ahead and multiply three through two meters times one hundred one hundredths. Well, we know one hundred one hundredths is just a fancy version of one. So one copy of two meters it's going to be equal to 2. Now here's something really interesting. I want you to all recall the fact that math is really in its essence just the analysis, oops I forgot to put a blue box around this, is just the analysis of patterns. So when we multiply 2 meters by something smaller than 1, smaller than 1, just slightly smaller, than one, and I'm going to use that term slightly because you notice that it's just a wee bit smaller than one, we ended up with something that was just slightly smaller than two, the original two meters, just slightly smaller than two. Did anyone notice that when we, when we were doing that work? Okay, cool. And then here, let's see. Here when we multiplied two meters by something just slightly, slightly larger. Notice how that's just slightly larger than one. What did we end up with? We ended up with something that was, hmm slightly larger than two. I like this. Okay, very cool. And then finally, what, what color have I not really used yet? I've used my orange. I've used, used green. I guess I haven't really used red. So here we multiplied two meters by just one. And then what did we end up with? We ended up with the same number. I don't feel like that's a surprise to any of you. This is a really, really interesting um, result of scaling factor. When we multiply something by um, a product, a scaling factor that's just slightly smaller than one, our result is going to be 
just slightly smaller than our original factor. Here, we multiplied 2 meters by something slightly larger than 1, and look, our result was slightly large, oops, I forgot to include this word, slightly larger than 2. And then here, this one, this is like kind of, this one isn't that exciting, but we multiplied something by 1, and wow, nothing happened. Cool. We're going to check this out uh, in a few more examples. Get two more um, examples, and I was forgetting what, what colors did I use before. This is not going to be consistent with the colors I used um, in our previous example, but we're just going to be super flexible. So let's look at, so we're <clears throat> multiplying 19.4 um, twice, and the first time we're going to be multiplying 19.4 by something that's just slightly smaller than 1. Okay, so I want you to start making some predictions. And then in B, we're going to be multiplying 19.4 by something that is way smaller than one, it's almost zero. It's just two hundredths away from being zero. So let's think about what this is going to result in, what sort of products we're going to be looking at. Um, again, the numbers in the boxes are our scaling factors. I want you to consider what's going to happen with this 19.4 when we multiply it by something slightly smaller than one and then way smaller than one. Um, and we can do this in a few different ways. <clears throat> we can look at 19.4 um, times, how do I want to do this? Um, let's look at, yeah, let's look at 19.4 times 96 hundredths. Let's think about this as, let's look, think about this in uh, unit form. So that's going to be 194. What place value is this? Thank you, Massimo. It is tenths. So this is 194 tenths times 96 what place value is this, Mr. Max? Thank you, hundredths, times 96 hundredths. This is one way we can multiply these through. Of course, there's many, many other ways we can do this, but this way just feels good right now. So let's go ahead and multiply these numbers through. We're looking at 6 times 4, which is 24, and then we have 9 times 6, which is 54, plus 2 is 56, and then we have 6 times 1 is 6, plus 5 is 11. Go down here. This is not a 9, it is a 90. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my place value is held. And now, well, I'm going to cross these out so I don't get confused. 9 times 4 is 36. So let's go ahead and, I'm running out of room, uh, document that. And then we have 9 times 9, which is 81, plus 3 is 84. And then we have 9 times 1 is 9, plus 8 is 17. So let's go ahead. Oops. Let's go ahead and add up our two partial products. Uh, thank you, Mr. Holden. He's doing this for me. We have 4 plus 0, and then we have 12, and then we have a 6, and we have an 8, and we have a 1. But here we did tenths times hundredths. So our unit is going to be thousandths. Don't forget the D, thousandths. And thinking about what this looks like on the place value chart, Let's go ahead and drop these digits in. So I have 1, 8, 6, 2, 4. If this 4 is going to be in the thousands place value, that means my decimal has to be right here. So our result when we multiply 19.4 times 0.96 is 18 and 624 thousandths. Um, I'm just going to put that in a box for now, and then we'll look at how that compares to our original. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to green here. And now we're looking at 19.4 times 0 0.002. Um, I think our unit form is a really good, great way to multiply numbers. We already know that this is 194 tenths, um, thanks to Anushka. Thanks, buddy. And then, oops. I'm on the edge here. And then we're multiplying this by two hundredths. I'm just going to kind of 
square. We see that that says hundredths, right? We'll just pretend. Let's multiply through. We get eight, and then we get 18, and we get three. So 194 times two is going to be 388. What are our tenths times hundredths? Again, that's going to be thousandths. So um, we'll just use this handy dandy place value chart all as well. And something that's in 388 thousandths, our last digit is going to fall right here in the thousandths. This 19.4 uh, times 0 0.02 is going to be equal to 0.388 or 388 thousandths. Now let's look at our products compared to our scaling factors. When we multiplied 19.4 by something just slightly smaller than one, what did we show up with? Well, we showed up with a product that's just slightly smaller than our original, right? Does that match? Totally. And then we got really wild over here and we multiplied 19.4 by something that's way smaller than one. And did we end up with a result that was way smaller than our original product? Uh, yeah, we did. Wow. Um, cool. I am going to go ahead and stop here. You're going to have a chance to do a little bit of practice yourself. Um, check Google Classroom for your next set of directions. Keep up the great work. Proud of you already. Have been for a very long time. <laughs>